Right, hello everybody. We are in the midst of a charity stream, but new hot breaking news just came out and we've got to talk about it. Everybody wants to hear, everybody wants to know. Uh, balance update, April 28th, 2020. First and foremost, we hope everyone's staying safe in these unprecedented times. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm not going to read all the PR speak. We are going to do a very quick first impressions of these. I've already glimpsed through them, but there is just too much text. Look at this. Look how long I'm scrolling. I'm not going to read the whole post. I'm sorry, guys. You can read it yourselves. Let's just go straight to the points. I'm not even going to talk about their analysis of each matchup, even though I think that's great context. You should all go to the link and check it out. It is linked below. Korhak says, is the UNEC going to be on YouTube? I mean, Twitch chat literally taking my manhood. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> I, I, probably. I, the, old, the last time I wore it, I don't think it's on. All right, guys. So let's take a look at the changes. Um... Terran, first of all, Drilling Claw upgrade no longer grants Widow Mines invisibility. Instead, the existence of an armory will grant Widow Mines invisibility. So this is very cool. This means you get that quick armory. You're going to force detection out of Protoss a bit more. Uh, I know this has been a pet peeve of mine is I want to do a Widow Mine drop. Uh, I don't happen to micro the mines well enough. And they just run their probes away, go back to mining, and they all in me at the same time. And I'm like... And I barely end up dying from their third warp in in my main. And I'm like, you know what? It's kind of bullshit that they could defend my my, my three or four Widow Mine drop with just, with just probes. So for me, I'm like, okay, it makes this more accessible. An armory is still an expensive, unnecessary structure that early. So it still costs you something to get there. But um, but that is interesting. Now, the red laser attachment of Widow Mines. So basically, for those who don't know, there's a visual indicator. A red laser sticking out above the Widow Mine or in front of it, that will communicate the existence of an armory. So basically that's telling you, hey, these there's no visual indicator for drilling claws, quick burrow, unburrow, but there is for, hey, these are permanently invisible, which is very cool. So that's an interesting change. It's going to make the Widow Mines uh, a bit better there. Against Zerg just means you've got to have that Overseer with your army a little bit more. Um, I think that's fine. I, I think this is totally okay. We played with that sort of Widow Mine for a long time um, where it, it didn't even need the armory and it was permanently invisible for years. We played with that. So I'm, I'm keen to try it out again, see how it goes. Uh, I'm not really going to be passing judgment on any of these. Um, I'll give you a very quick summary at the end. So to encourage more dynamic gameplay in TVP first, we believe Widow Mines naturally lend themselves to more multi-prong tactics and drop play over their siege tank counterparts. In addition, because of the increased strain... Oh my god, thank you so much, guys. Um, in addition, because of the increased strain placed on Observer Placement, we believe this change will create more openings for Terran to drop in general. Um, damn. Damn, 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 damn. Um, yep, yep, yep. Put indirect economic pressure on Protoss. Help ease the transition to 2-2 infantry upgrades. Because, okay, yep. Fair enough. Uh, Zerg, Queen Anti-Air Weapon Range decreased from 8 to 7. This is a no-brainer in my mind. I think get rid of that just Anti-Air Range on the Queen just a little bit. They're still a fantastic defensive unit. They still got Transfuse. Just going to be a, a bit more able to bounce around with an Archon Drop, to bounce around with the Medivac, with the Liberator, with the Banshee. Now, of course, uh, it will significantly weaken their Anti-Air. This is going to weaken Zerg. And that is the concern with all these changes that have been listed. And it's something I'll talk about at the end of the video. I really like this, though, as an individual change because it increases interaction. The Queen is not an interesting unit. It is something that is just this beefy, ultra-defensive, shuts-down air harass unit in the early game that also happens to help with your injects and so on. So um, I I've never been a big fan of Queens as a defensive unit. I've always much more enjoyed a Zerg who reacts with roaches or zerglings or banelings and you know i always like the queens just a bit more of a support so having that anti-air toned back a little bit i'm i'm keen to see but you combine that with this next one and we start to go oh is it too much is it too much i have been talking a lot about how i would like to see creep spread nerfed i want to see the vision taken away right i want to see that ability for zerg to crush out the opponent's comeback mechanics by covering the map in creep gone from the matchup a little bit right i think the way Zergs are kind of just mindlessly spamming creep on the map. It's given them this weird, uninteractive way of getting ahead whenever the opponent's not in their face. And for me, that's the thing I'd like to see toned back as a general, let's tone Zerg down nerf. When you add the queen range um, and so on, 
to now banelings losing that plus five hit points that they get with baneling speed that goes i go oh maybe a little too much we'll see how it goes though we'll see how it goes i i do see so many banelings make it through storms with like two hit points and still hit the protoss army and i go oh man that would be so this is actually quite impactful um marines as well are gonna gun down banelings a lot and it is gonna decrease the cost of baneling speed 150 150 down to 100 100 does that compensate for it I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, oh God, you guys are being so generous. Thank you so much for helping support Feeding America, guys. It is a really good cause. I'm going to talk about it and give you all shout outs in just a sec. They've got rid of the upgrade needed for Microbial Shroud. Thank God. That may actually be a useful upgrade now. Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be fan bloody tastic, wouldn't it? Um, in general, when trying to craft novel abilities, we try to tune them towards being powerful. However, with the perception of Zerg last year, we tried to be more careful. This change is one further step we'd like to take towards ungating the power behind Microbial Shroud, and we're open to future alterations should we see the need. Okay, yeah, like, uh, we made the useless spell more accessible. I might actually use it sometimes now, right? You happen to have some infestors out for another reason. You somehow end up with Hydras versus Libs or BCs or, or Carriers. Oh, you know what? I can throw down a Microbial Shroud. Suddenly, it's something that you're going to find an opportunity to use this. Roddy wasn't happy about it. Ha! <laughs> He's like the one player because his sky toss style. He likes to hit with a sky toss timing pre-storm. Microbial Shroud actually is really good versus that one style. So that's that's actually hilarious. I I, I they needed to make it more accessible. It's just not being used. Um yes, Hubble Who. I'm actually gonna talk about that. So people are gonna people are gonna question that, and I, I already looked all that shit up. It's very high, very high. Thank you. Good man doing your research. Um creep tumor. Armored tag removed, light tag added. Now, this is a really interesting change. It's going to allow Hellions, Adepts, Oracles to just zap the crap out of Creep Tumors a lot quicker. This makes me happy because I'm sick of Creep. I would have preferred something where, oh, I don't know. The Creep doesn't see everything. Um, but this honestly is a step in the right direction. It means Adepts, Hellions, and so on are going to be able to just zap those tumors a lot easier this makes a big difference they've also got a very cool we're going to jump down to the revelation change we'll come back to the other one so they've also changed revelation so it costs half the energy lasts half the duration what oh so you can now spam revelation a bit more on different areas to clear creep they said you know what let's actually allow the oracle to be more effective at clearing creep uh with that rip my creep clearing oracle <laughs> My <laughs> click clearing void race says bow and in chat. <laughs> oh my god. So revelation here is going to be more of a creep clearing ability combined with that, which is really interesting. I'm curious to see how it goes. I already think, I know a lot of people have complained about creep tumors not being cancelable. Best change. Best change out there. Don't get me wrong. It removed cool interaction, cancelled the tumor as they come in. But um, it was also effing, effing silly, I think, in my opinion, with like how, how good creep spread is. So for me, it's actually like an old pet peeve is just how strong the queen is. So the fact that they've um, nerfed the transfuse and now they've taken back one range off it, it does make me happy. Because for me, the queen is just a, a very uninteresting unit where um, it's just too too good defensively. And even like people loved like the Suppy Lisk, which was where Suppy was dead in a game. And then he had like 15 Queens and one Ultra Lisk. And he used like 36 transfusers and won the game because this one Ultra took on a whole army. Um, even games like that, I was like, this, this, this friggin' this is such an uninteresting unit, man. Because it's so bad aggressively, but it's just so good at hanging on. And I, it has its place. It has its place. But I like it being toned down a little. Anyway, there is a new ability here for Protoss. Battery Overcharge. Effect overcharges the target shield battery, increasing its shield restoration rate by 100% and causing it to regenerate 100 energy over 21 seconds. Now, what's interesting here is this costs 75 energy. That's a lot of Nexus energy. That's one and a half chrono boosts. But guess, guess what, guys? 100 energy over 21 seconds. A shield battery has... 200? No, it does have 100 energy max. They change. Okay, it's 100 energy max, which heals 300 shields, because it's three shields for every one energy. So this is basically over 21 seconds. That shield battery will go from zero to full. So this is going to help you defend a lot of those all-ins on your natural, where you've got the nexus, but no actual workers on it, and you're just trying to hold your wall against a speedling all-in. Bam, fill up some shield battery things. Okay, cool. 21 seconds is not that quick, so that's kind of nice. Uh, chat says beastie tested it it seems weak this is a very niche bonus thing yes 
I mean, you, you can look at the stats, guys. This is... <laughs> you're spending one and a half chrono boosts to slowly refill one shield battery. This is not pile on overcharge. <laughs> this is not... This is not like... Do, do, do. This is gonna... This is gonna hold an all in. This is like a small way the Nexus can contribute directly to the fight. The interesting thing here, though, is... Um, so that's like mostly for holding the wall against Zergling all-ins, where your shield batteries are running out of energy, you just can't keep the wall up. That's going to just give you a few more seconds. There are times where you you don't really want to be chronoing a unit and you actually want to defend that way. So it will come in handy. It's a niche ability. It adds a little bit of decision making. It's not very powerful and not very exciting. We'll see how it goes though. Like I I, I like it because it's it, there's choice and it's interesting, but I mean it's like. What the most exciting abilities in StarCraft are overpowered, right? Like, you guys ever get Cracklings in a mineral line? You ever do Baneling Drop on a probe or drone line? OP is all hell. That's why they're exciting and fun. This is like a... Ah, oh, that's a fun little niche thing. Cool. It's like um, it's like hallucinating to tank damage. You will, you'll see it very rarely, but when you see it, it's pretty cool. So, not a bad idea. Uh, as we said, Oracle... We've also got feedback range increased from 9 to 10. This is a big one. This is going to make those High Templar feedbacks on the Ghosts a bit more effective since Ghost EMP is so big now, right? The Ghosts tend to win that trade. Um, and think about it. We have seen a big shift away from High Templar. High Templar are like the real cherry on the cake of the Disruptors and the Colossus in most recent TVP I've watched. Um, Storm Drops are still good. Don't get me wrong. That can still guard the High Templar. Some people still use Storm incredibly. But uh, in terms of the pro-favored splash damage, it hasn't been Storm for a while. So this will help in that interaction. And they're actually really favoring it towards Zerg because of the abducts that keep coming down um, on the mothership and the carriers. It's like, hey, one extra range is going to give Protoss a bit more strength in that late game interaction. Um, so guys, when this post goes live, the balance test mod will have been updated with these changes. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and watching the resulting games. As always, keep in mind these changes are subject to change before they hit the ladder. So a whole bunch of proposed changes there. Uh, my my real fear, I guess, um, and it's not it's not a massive fear, but it is a little one. It's just that maybe it's going to be, you know, right now I feel like TVZ has started to get to a point where even though there are games where it's like, oh man, this Zerg is in such a crazy position. How do you stop this? This is crazy. So, um, <laughs> uh, but as EVT, I do feel like there's been games where it, it's like, uh, you know, watching a laser clem just now and, and other series, obviously we're seeing games where a, a Zerg player looks like they're in that unstoppable position, but they're getting overwhelmed a little bit, right? Um, oh, don't tell me he already deleted the tweet. Oh, risky. Why do you hate me? Oh, I hate, God damn it, risky. Oh, he's locked his account as well, actually. Never mind. He doesn't want me sharing this, probably. I think he's sick of people harassing him. Risky made a tweet saying, if you if you like these changes, I'm unfollowing you or like you're an idiot or something like that. So, <laughs> But he's deleted it. He, it was obviously an emotional response. He's probably struggling against top Terrans at the moment. And he's like, ah, oh, man, seriously, we're going to listen to so that's one one bit of feedback um, there. So I do think um, generally, though, ZVT could be an issue. It's going to be very interesting to see how this all f all works out. Like I said, maybe maybe Zerg needs to be compensated in some way. So I'm I'm not a uh, I, I'm I'm down with nerfing queens, nerfing creep, getting rid of the bane speed, uh, strength. But I I also wouldn't mind even bigger shifts like this. And this is like me playing out my fantasy, going back to four lava and inject, making Zerg a bit more swarmy, and a bit more um take away some of their strengths and put them even more into the shit units. And the thing is, we've become such a, a race that enjoys our good units and enjoys the way we play, it's going to be hard for us as Zerg players to adapt and swap back into a heart of the swarm. I got more shit than you and more drones, but my units suck really bad, right? Um, we still need to keep Ravages and Lurkers and these new tools that Zerg has. Um, but it is interesting because Zerg in Legacy of the Void has moved to more of an equal supply race, whereas they were always higher supply, swarming, backstabbing never fighting the army back in in heart of the swarm and they've become a little bit more of a front on race in legacy of the Void. a little bit don't get me wrong there's still a lot of scenarios they go around and they backstab and they they overwhelm but uh it's it's interesting we'll see exactly how it goes let's take a look at some of the community feedback um unless you get extremely creative i hate the new reddit man this this website's such a piece of crap apparently i'm not logged in maybe that's why it looks so bad Unless you get extremely creative, you'll not be able to offensive battery overcharge rush your opponents. Somewhere out there, SOS and Florencio are giggling ominously. Flo 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just saying, look, we've got we've got a, an overcharge thing on this battery, but it's like you need a Nexus next to it, so it's it's not gonna be very useful. At least now, I I won't need to buy a microbial shroud to not use it. I think people will actually use use this spell now. It's just it was gated. It, it was already a niche thing, and it was already so far off. Um, so yeah. Baneling and Queen nerf. This is huge. Imagine a Bioverse Lane Bane fight and add up those five hit points with Marine Marauder DPS. These fights are going to be vastly different, particularly off creep. Absolutely. Absolutely. You combine the creep change with the five hit points on the Banelings. This this could make some very big differences. Um, I, I do, you know, worry a little bit about how Zerg will adapt. Um, we also saw some other pros. I think it was Future, by the way, who... Let me check. I'll show you guys his his tweet. And these are obviously first responses. So before you all go pitchfork and stuff, um, this is all memes. It's all fun. When Zerg summoned this patch will be unplayable. A little trauma can be illuminating. Indeed, I agree. Um, <laughs> Lights of fire in YouTube comment section right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, obviously he's kind of joking. Um, Things still need to be figured out. We'll see how it goes. Uh, creep tumors were armored this whole time. I just learned this. I had no idea. It's a subtle change. Why are people not screaming? What the hell? It always feels like next... Okay, guys. We're looking at the wrong comment section, clearly. Let's go to the... Oh, there's no comments on the post. Oh, Blizzard's learning how to shut down the toxic debate. These guys are censoring the true spirit of the internet. I am sick of Blizzard trying to shut down just the reasonable discussion on the balance forums. Where there'll be one guy who's like, well, I still think Marines should have plus 30 hit points in, like, the first response. You're like, what is, it? What is this guy even talking about? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's okay. Everyone's actually pretty happy with the idea of the changes. But uh, I think there's a lot of Zergs who are going to be pretty upset with it. So we'll see exactly how it goes. People are saying I need to sort by, sort by controversial. Okay, let's go to the controversial comments. Thank you, chat. Some good, some nah. Verpers just got nerfed really hard against Protoss, making the Golden Armada much, much stronger, which is already pretty freaking strong. Baneling change is good. Wouldn't I mind them making the damage against buildings less upgrade dependent? Less. What? Oh, okay. So, like, they get... What? Oh, so this person's talking about Baneling damage versus buildings. That's an odd one. Queen upgrade is questionable against early Liberator and Cyclone attacks. Liberator Cyclone attacks? a liberator cyclone attack i'm confused scouting i guess they mean like because it's the anti-air range queen upgrade what are we talking about this is very confusing scouting for when to throw down a roach horn is going to be imperative huh microbial shroud i don't know whatever i think it should be casted on a pack of units instead of area so kiting isn't a possibility Endgame versus Protoss is going to be a shit fest either way. Protoss, I just don't know. Great buffs. Maybe too great in some case. But 75 energy for shield recharge is asking a lot. Okay, this, this guy's kind of reasonable while saying some vague nonsense. I like it. If you're getting pushed, you don't have 75 energy. You need Chrono to get your units out. Saving it for one battery probably won't be worth it or will be too hard to decide if it's justified. I don't understand why Disruptors weren't nerfed. Okay, we're going on a tangent. I like it. We don't mind change is going to destroy Diamond and Below, but that's not what they're going for. It will definitely change the dynamic, and I wonder if losing that first Oracle is going to tilt too hard. Well, I mean, it might be time that Diamond Below learn how to, you know, I don't know, get some map vision or some scouting or split their units up. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This is my constant fight with, like, the player base of StarCraft. This is the one thing where normally I try to see things from the community's point of view. And then I hear people complain so much about permanently invisible widow mines. And I'm like, it's not that bad, guys. Like, when I was learning Terran and Protoss, like, there was, I would always just made sure I had detection and, like, dealt with it. And there was a whole skill set I developed around that. And then they're like, yeah, widow mines are permanently visible. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I realized when they suggested turning it back, and everyone was like, that was the worst thing ever. Widow mines killed my mineral line every game. And I was like, whoa, did they? Oh, no. I'm sorry, guys. Um,. And everyone gets really angry and says, please don't change that back. So I, 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 I'm I, toning it down. I understand, guys. Widow mines are hard. They still need an armory for this. It's not the way it used to be, where they literally just pop out of the factory permanently invisible. They still need an armory. That's still a big investiture. I think this is the middle ground. The elitists like me who are like, eh, invisible widow mines aren't the hardest. It's okay. And, uh, and the people who constantly struggle with having detection everywhere. 
which is everybody, let's be real. Uh, you know, I think there's a middle ground. I think we'll try it. We'll give it a go and see how it goes. I'm very curious to see what happens. Um, there's going to be people so angry that I said this is okay. Oh, here's a good one. Ha 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 ha. They buffed the widow mine. That's what Terra needs. A better widow mine. Ha 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 ha. I like that comment. This is what we call intelligent discourse of Reddit, and what a great spot to end the video. That player clearly has never killed their own entire army with their own widow mines. Um, GG, thank you very much for watching, guys. This was a first impressions video. Uh, I'll hop on and change, try the changes. I just read them before we went live. I don't have any real advanced analysis. Uh, I think they're all good ideas. I would like to see certain things go in other directions, but I think for now it's okay, uh, but it will probably need tweaking, as always. I would rather, though, things go a little bit more drastically one way and they upset things and they move things around more and, and then tone it back. I'd like them to go that way. You know, don't do it the microbial shroud way where you're like, we got this new upgrade that's really niche and also it's like gated behind a hive tech upgrade and you're like, no one's ever going to use this. Be more risky, be more aggressive, piss us StarCraft players off. Force us to adapt, to learn, to react and then we can tone it back after we've spent some time grinding and trying to figure our way past these challenges, I'm ready for a big upset with the balance, with the design. I want to see things screwed around a bit. I hope you guys can embrace the challenge with me, embrace the tears. I know it's going to be frustrating and hard for all of us adjusting to changes, but you know it'll be good for it. Good for the game, good for the fun. It'll force us to learn new skills. It'll be awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.